told you in the mid game. My screen go. I'm doing it back in. Swisher after Swisher. Step for the lock and hit you.
Off top we hot, off top, off top we hot. Coming from up top, and you got a hat on. 
Yep, that's that. So. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. If you had a light that can come from the front. Then we got you, but otherwise it's gonna be a little dark because you want to leave that light with the hat on. But we straight yeah, up, we'll it. get it in. DJ. <laughs> What up, Jay? Boss man, boss man, I'm up. Alive. It's, it's, hey, you, did, you, you seen what's going on with the Lakers, huh? They said today they're starting hey. a football season. Hey, listen. The Lakers are just the Lakers right now, man. There ain't no showtime or nothing but. You know, they bounce back against you know. Find out a couple more years in them at the lead, man. Might be the piece together. I don't think they got the best to put that no more right now. So, it is what it is. Yeah. Boston. Boston looks good. What about the Lions? You like the Detroit Lions this season? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm going to mess with the Lions. I made a Lions joint. Okay. But, um, so. He said we ready, the, the music rolling, so we just going to go back and forth and just vibe. You know what I'm saying? Introduction. We're going to start at the introduction. You uh, All you got to do is shout out nwclv.fm. That's the uh, Las Vegas only black-owned dispensary on the Worldwide Cannabis Network. NW, hold on. In. That's a lot of letters, man. For the place, man. Yeah. N W right there. Stuff, man. Right there. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Yup, 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 yup. We ready. Y'all ready? What up? What up? What up? What up, man? Stacy Mayweather live, man. The creator and designer for Mayweather Apparel LLC, man. Uh, TMT represented. You know what I'm saying? Straight from Michigan, man. But uh, I created it in Vegas. Uh, thanks for having me. The uh, NWCLV radio station. The black, the first black owned radio, I mean, the first black owned dispensary as well in DJ. Vegas. So, you know, you got to rock with your people, man. Our people got to, uh, one hand got to watch the other, one back scratch another back, man. Open these doors, man, and that's how we create that Black Wall Street. So you know, mess with your people. So James turned me on uh, to it. He said it was cool. He said it was black on. I said, yeah, man, I want to, I want to get to that. You know, and that's a nice place to let them know I will be coming back to Vegas, like June or July, setting up shop there, man. So y'all gonna definitely see me. Yeah, yeah. I see. How, how long you been vibing in Vegas for? What you been doing out in Vegas? What's you, who your people out here in Vegas? I mean, I've been coming to Vegas, man, most of my life because you got to think it started with Roger. Roger came down there, may he rest in peace. Roger Mayweather, okay. Roger Mayweather. Yeah. He came down there when he was 20. So, you know, going back and forth because I always had family there. You know, me and Floyd grew up like brothers. So, of course, when he came down there, I got down there way different because we was the same age. Then after my uncle Roger came, the next uncle to go there was Jeffrey. That's the youngest of the brothers. And then uh, last, of course, after he got out of prison, my uncle uh, Big Floyd came down there. You know, So we called him Big Floyd in my family because we called Floyd Little Floyd because he's not actually a junior. He's just a little Floyd because, you know, Floyd's father didn't have a middle name. His name was Floyd Mayweather. His boxing name was Floyd Joy Mayweather. So he named his son of his boxing name. So we called him Little Floyd, not Junior. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but uh, he's been rocking with Vegas for a while. Um, as you know, I started the, the clothes coming from the candles. And that's when me and you was doing our thing. 
on the photograph tip when I get back and get to work too and get to doing some of the shows we was doing. You know, just like when you was recording me for the Fight Hype. Uh, shout out to Ben Thompson for Fight Hype. He out of Ohio. Um, you know, he gave me the opportunity. We still got that, but we're going to make sure that uh, Mayweather POV channel do some real stuff. We're going to get back to doing the stuff we did, interviewing fighters and different people. Now we got a team up there since I left. It's a team up there now. I got a cocky team, so now it's more events going on. So it's definitely just a popping spot. You already know. I'm going to get to it when we get there. So get ready. Put your 3D glasses on. I don't know what them is. They better be 3D because, you know, the clips is coming. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I remember when you had your store over at Tattoos and Smoke over there off of uh, Rancho. Oh, yeah. They are good people, man. But I want to do it a little different this time. When I come there this time, I want to... Um, basically get a kiosk in the spot. So I want to be able to do stuff freestyle, but while still pushing my brand. See, it's a difference. Vegas is more of the custom, and I want to um, uh, get some space. I don't care if I'm out there just like the people that's dancing and stuff. I want to be out there going live, uh, getting hats and stuff like that together right there on the scene too, and bring something different to the strip. Because I already know that's good money, 500 to to $1,000 every day. 50 million people visit Vegas every year. So if a person doing anything in their business not doing what they're supposed to do, it's something they're doing wrong on the promotion. I just noticed the secret is money. So you got to be willing, man, to lose everything, to get everything sometimes. You got to think, while running this business, I done slept in my car and all that stuff, man, did whatever I had to do to do what I had to do. The, the average people didn't know that, but I was. Man. I'm not like this new world. I, I don't mind telling people um, my struggles doing something, man, because I don't think it doesn't come easy. Me personally, I don't. Right, 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 right. So what, what's the what's the hottest outfits? What's the hottest color combinations? Who been wearing the outfits? Because I know they had you in Rogers Plaza out there in Grand Rapids. What, what's going on out, out there in Rogers Plaza and you know, over on Division Street? What's going on out there? Hey, rappers, I mean, I dominated this city, you know. I mean, I'm already goaded. It's a small town. It's just time. Because you got to think, as you know, I started this in Vegas. But I came back here. And if you understand the Midwest compared to Vegas, it's just a whole different world. Um, the competitive nature different. The creativity. So I needed to come back. And I needed to let my hometown know. This really is real. This really was going down. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't be playing, yeah. like joking. That like I had to get that grid. So end up getting the sublimation machine, DTF machine, way more presses, hat presses, learning different techniques and stuff like that. So now I'm ready to come back and um, dominate there. Like yeah, because I, I remember lad, you was out there. You was working with uh that uh, embroidery shop over there on Decatur. Coast to coast, you was working with coast to coast, right? Yeah, um, that's when I was when I was uh, that would be for TFT stuff because you know I was always making my stuff, but for TFT, I'll go over there, man, and um, get people stuff like that. Now I don't have to um, deal with no middleman. I can make anything myself, so I don't need to really deal with no middleman on on that stuff. Getting all the equipment, you know, it's all about the sacrifice getting the equipment and stuff, but, um, you know, Mr. Cheeks, um, I done so got stuff to Mr. Cheeks, Fred Star, man, um, uh, people from, just all through New York, man, all through New York. Man. Yeah, um, the Fernet, the Furtado, yeah. the Furtado brothers, I remember, yeah, you know the Furtado uh, brothers, what, how they been doing up there? They've been good, I want to go back out there to Southside Jamaica, it was during COVID, but it was a it was a different experience. Real hip hop, a lot of love, man. They just showed just love, and respect to me on the strength of just my family. Period. Me coming out there, and it was cool. People pulled up on Rolls Royces. You know, I'm out there spitting, and you know, I could rap. They thought this was the dude who made club. They even got it right there. Like, you know, yeah, it was cool, man. It's yeah, because they said they went to your birthday party. They said you had a birthday party last week. Well, how was it? Where was it at? Where was it located? What what venue was it at? It was at a spot called uh, Metro. 
Metro okay. Grand Rapids. Okay, Metro. They've been a lot of stuff. Skinbone supposed to come up there, I think. Uh, oh, Skinbone, the comedian. Okay. Skinbone was up there. Um, yeah. Jack Funny. Three. Jack Shout Funny, okay. Buchanan. Jack Funny, okay. Then it's a Jerry Buchanan coming from my city. Look for him on Facebook or something. Y'all can find it. It's kids. He out of the city. He trying to come up. Um, you know, he doing skits with all them guys too. So, you know, I like that little, I, I don't really do it. You know, and I deal with the YouTube. That's not really going to be my thing, skits, but I think it's cool. I like the way that they all stick together, man. And uh, they all do different videos with each other, man. And they don't mind um, lending out their services to people. And that's, that's dope. Instead of them right, trying right. to all be, they kind of rock with each other. I just seen skin bone and, and Jack Funny stuff, Chicago people and Detroit stuff, and Cali people, they all kind of mix and match with each other. That's cool. Yeah, so what about the, uh, how you been doing with the suits and the joggers? You've been making, you've been, you've been developing jogging outfits and suits, huh? Them the custom gear that they wearing out there in Grand Rapids in Detroit, they wearing it, right? You know what I'm saying? No matter where I'm at, I mean, see, yeah, I think I started in Vegas. So yeah. people say, but well, damn, how did you sell, you know, track shoes still? You know, you got dinner track shoes. How do you sell them year round? I said, because people go to the gym. It's nighttime still, you know. Track suit, like Floyd told me, you know, after he seen me do it, he said, that's real smart. He said, you know, person always needs a track suit, nice jogging suit to run errands. You know what I'm saying? To, to run errands and do stuff like that. So, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. I seen you had the maroon, that light blue, that Carolina blue that hit. I like that Carolina blue with I them like Carolina them. blue Jordans, them number fours. This maroon, look at this joint. Okay. Let me show you something different. Stack joggers, right? Oh yeah, Please yeah, yeah. Them clean right there. I like them. That remind me of that uh Hoosiers. That's that Houston Hoosiers. That's that uh yeah. that Houston yeah. Hoosiers outfit. Yeah. Pretty different. Yeah. Three quarter length. I see. Three quarter length. Yeah. Hoodie. Okay. What up? That's the one. Is that the one that Diamond Man, the jeweler for Snoop Dogg, wore? What's the jeweler name for Snoop Dogg? With that that uh had an outfit on. Oh, uh, the one that made the end. The jeweler for the one made the jewelry. Snoop came up here. Um, yeah. It's designer diamonds. Designer diamonds. It's my man Demarcus Batty he got a, a spot called Designer Diamonds. That's where I got these pieces from. Black owned on the, the first black owned in um, this part of Michigan. Okay. Yeah. Not in all of Michigan, but in our region, he was the first uh, uh, black owned, fully black owned jewelry store. He did real good work, real quick. What Shit about Free Yay? What about Free Yay? I know you've been working with uh, you 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 know what's going on with Free Yay? Free Yay got some hits, man. I like Free A music. I know you was you was you was letting me hear that catalog yeah. for Free A. They do he drops some stuff in America, but what I believe he's doing is, you know, he doing a lot of different stuff um, on the um, worldwide circuit because you know you got to think he himself was in Canada and he's of African descent, so his arm reaches to different places. So I think he in a position that he don't got to rush on ground on America as much. Okay. But yeah, he's real good, man. Still working, from what I see. Cool. So, what about the hats, though? I know you've been you've been doing the hats. You had the uh, car collection with the Hot Wheels. How that Hot Wheels collection went? Cause that was them. There was some yeah. nice. Yeah. There was some nice luxury brands you was putting together with the cars. What about the stories with the cars? What was that about? What this is is, I like to just create stuff like, okay. <laughs> This my man car right here. Because, you know, in Michigan, I don't know if y'all know about the man. What? I don't fuck around with the scoop, see? Okay, this yeah. This is money, right? 
fire. So, the grand rap is all yeah. stuff like that. So what I do is I take your car and put my touches on it, spice them up, put dope backgrounds on it. And this one here was you see that? I call that one Grand Rapids Auto instead of Grand Theft Auto. I see, I see, yeah. Grand Rapids Auto. That's, yeah. a, hot wheel. That's a hot wheels right there. So I put they car on there because know you know people like their car, they motorcycle and stuff like that. And they have a big car show out here. People come from all over and they just cruise. So like a, a ten mile stretch. So it's just all type of cars. So they did very well during that time. That's why um, I think you can't really see it if you look like right there. It's a Metro Cruise. That was the time for it for this one. Yeah, I and see. That's the thing. It's funny. I like the stuff that I call it wash and rinse. Okay. Wash and rinse is wash and rinse is when you create something that you could go a million places and it's gonna sell. Right, I see. Yeah, I see. I see you got it going. Cause I see you was doing the portraits of uh with the uh you had the Tupac, the uh Suge Knight, the faces of all the family. You know what I'm saying? Let let them know about that portrait you made. That hard. That that was that Tupac edition. The um the the Mayweather, the Godfather's the box. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Find it, man. I ain't gonna go looking right now, but it is tough. That's my uh, that's gonna always be the most popular piece. Uh, that's like it's crazy about that because I created that, but I didn't physically. Um, uh, what about the Roger really Mayweather good. shirt? The uh, the shirt you had on the other day. That Roger Mayweather shirt, that was hard. I, you gotta let them see that, the fans. That's a hard one right there. That Black Mama uh -huh. shirt, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, that's the one, that hoodie. Yeah, okay. Roger Mayweather, uh -huh. you don't know nothing about that box. I'm not, that's what I need you to do. What's up? You got a radio station. You ain't gonna play nothing. You ain't gonna play nothing. Yeah, yeah, it's running in the background right now a little bit. You probably can't hear it, but it's running. Oh, okay. okay. You got a little bit of music yeah. in the backdrop. Yeah. Hold on. Let me see if you can hear it. No, it don't matter. It don't matter. We good. We good. Yeah. Um. So what up? What's been? What's going on? Oh uh, man, we just uh, we we right now. Cap. He uh. That's. DJ Kane Cobra, he was just uh, he out here promoting. He doing some promotions. He he working with uh IG Entertainment. They doing all the rap. They doing rap hosting. They they hosting all the local Las Vegas artists. They just getting their music out. That's what they doing. They working with, with Cap, DJ Kane Cobra. They over here at the NWC. You know that's what they do. Okay, that's what's up. That's yeah. what's up. That's what's up. Like I said, like the stuff I was talking about, each one teach one and pushing the next brother, trying to get the next brother to the next level. All about they got them flavors them. too, Stacy. They get they just like cookies. They what? They just like cookies. They got they they got flavors too. They got some. He got that Biggie Smalls flavor down there. That strain, that Biggie strain. Don't don't want them to be just like them. Just let them be just like they self. Yeah, yeah they own lane. They, you know. Yeah. Oh man, they 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 you know, at the end of the day, man, you know stuff don't happen overnight, man. It take it take time and consistency. And you know, the people that's there from the beginning, man, you know, stick through it, man, and, and believe in it and, and just come to different creative uh uh creative angles, man, coming come in different creative ways, man, promotion. Eventually, man, stuff will crack, man. It's just all about finding your audience. I live in Vegas, so it's, it's difficult to just find a certain uh, demographic there because the way Vegas is. So it's, I can imagine it's, it's difficult because they got so many dispensaries and there's so much competition there. What about, uh, like it is. 
What about uh that uh Floyd Mayweather senior brand that 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 CBD? How that CBD been doing? I mean, I was um, is doing doing pretty good, man. You know, like I said, he got a certain demographic with with his accomplishments mixed with his age. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, Big Floyd got a, a different demographic than you know a younger person. Big Floyd is a you're not a young man at this point, <laughs> so I, I can imagine him doing all right. But I don't really. I focus me and myself on not being on CBD. I got a little bit of uh, rub though, and it, it works pretty good. What about that? Uh, your your cologne, the, the colognes that uh, them flavored colognes that you was uh, developing when you was doing the uh, colognes back in the, a while ago. No, that was um, that wasn't me, Fifty doing. They was exclusive because uh, damn, I forgot his name off the top, man. I know he had an Oakland. Um, he had family in Dubai. He's an A-Rap guy. And, um, I was getting him from Dubai. But it was a thing that uh, it didn't really make the dollars. <laughs> you know, the yeah. price he wanted didn't really make me too much money. But it was good. Sometimes you get stuff and you can break even. It would be what attract people to your booth. For you to sell something else. So what's your view was, on what's your view on that uh Haney fight? I'm going for Haney, man. Come on now. I mean I don't know why Bill I don't know why Bill be getting you know him and Floyd or whatever he be getting on with Floyd be saying let's lick stuff up for us for years. But at the end of the day at the end of the day, listen, at the end of the day, one thing he know for sure is he know that Devin Haney is a product of the Mayweather's. He was raised up in that Mayweather gym. You know, he was taught by each. He was taught by each. He was taught uh, by, he was trained by each Mayweather, one of the only boxers I know to do that. And I know what he could do, man. Um, he's a young, young man. I ain't call him a kid no more, but he's a young man. And um, he got a lot of skills, man. And, um, I believe he's gonna push himself, but I don't know if Ryan got enough uh, skills just to deal with him, man. That that that, that dude as a kid, man, was uh, was the levels above a lot of grown men with his skill set. So uh, it's gonna be hard to beat him for anybody. He's not an easy fight for nobody. He could fight. What about that Frank Martin fight? That's a good fight. That's a good fight. Um, Frank can box, uh, but. Um, the thing Frank got to do, I mean, looking at his last performance, he can't do that. Frank got to use all his strengths, man, and he can't show no weakness because you can't slip up with a person like Tank. He dangerous, man. He dangerous. He smart. He slicker than people think. He quicker than people think. Um, he just as strong and not stronger than people think. And, um, you had to be for Frank Martin do have um, a style that would be interesting to see him fight because he's very good with his feet, man. His movement and angles are real. They're different, man. He's a different type of fighter, man. So it's going to be an interesting fight. I got it probably uh, 60 40, maybe tank way. Okay. So almost a 50 50. Almost a 50 50 fight, man. Frank can fight, man. What about Kermel Moton? I know you like, I know you like Kermel. Oh man, he, uh, he's special. What do you think, how you think he did in that last fight? He did good, man. At first, I caught just a couple pieces when he got hit with a punch and he was showing the highlights when I watched the whole fight. Um, he did his thing. I wish he would've stuck with his dad. I think he'd've got him out of there, but you know, he's still young and that was a good fight for him. It's good he did the whole eight rounds, man, so he don't get used to knocking people out in the first round. That was good. Showed a lot of uh, patience and stuff like that. Still tried to close the show, but uh, definitely a joy to watch, man. I didn't think I would see somebody with that type of skill set so early, but like I say, it's still early for him, but I can, you know, you can see the good ones from a mile away. It's just uh, about how they guide his career, man, and 
who they put them in there with. Yeah, yeah, I see. I see. He 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 he, he running the like he. There was some power plays though. He was doing some power punches though. He caught a few too though. Yeah, I mean, and that and that's that's actually a good thing. You, you know? said that's I part mean, of the game. That's part of the boxing, huh? That was a match to make him. Uh, he definitely dominated, but it's a match that will make him go go back and um, even get better and better. And you know, he. he he, I can tell you at his age, he's not happy with that performance, but it was a good performance. But he probably see what I seen at, at first. Now, he probably seen it and was like, damn, I should stay with my jab. He kind of went away from the jab, but I understood why, because he couldn't miss. But after a while, you know, he went back to the jab, tricked him a little bit. I think he would have got him out of there. So he took his time, but he kind of rushed. But you got to think, he's only 17 years old. Right, yeah, yeah, you right, you right. Uh, he ain't he's a champion, champs. though. He a champion. You know, uh, he, no, he ain't a champion. He only he, he only seventeen, so you got to think at seventeen, um, the average fighter don't fight somebody seven and up this this season. Um, uh, uh, you know, they, they got at least his fights since fighting at eight rounds already. So he already showed that he's. Special, and you gotta think his real manpower hasn't even kicked in yet. Right, he's right. Age twenty one, so he's definitely special, man. And, uh, but uh, like I said, just on that fight, I wish he would have uh, kept fighting off the jab, and maintaining his jab. I think uh, he would have, he would have got what he wanted to get. You know, he's putting on the show. There's a lot of people out there, so you know, he shows poise. You know, yeah, I think his fighters, man, that's twenty five years old, they haven't fought at the T Mobile or anything. So, he been on some good cards. They got him getting in fights and getting busy. I think he's just going to get better and better. Right, I see. Kid got pure talent, though. He got pure talent. A1 talent. Yeah. He remind me, he remind me, of, he remind me of champ, man. He got it in him, man. Yeah, he remind me of a uh, yeah. Floyd mix. With, to me, he remind me of a Floyd mix with Javante Davis. I see, yeah. That's what they were saying on Blue Bloods. I was watching Blue Bloods, Blue Bloods boxing the other day. That's what they were saying on Blue Bloods. I mean, I watch Blue Blood. I watch Brandon, man. I watch Champ Side. But it's difficult for me to watch it because um, a lot of those guys, man, are biased, man. You know, and, and got the people they pick and this, that, and that. And, you know, I just want to hear the news. So that's why, you know, at the end of the day, fight hype. I always go out for fight hype because they're going to tell you what the champ said or, you know, whoever the champion may be, they're going to tell you, they're going to show you what Terrence Crawford said. They're not going to sit around and try to make you convinced and stuff like that, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, I see. You know, and that's, no that's no disrespect, but it's like, that's just me being a real boxing fan. You know, we use y'all as an outlet. For uh, the sport, you know, we don't need y'all uh, personal opinion, man. Let's give us the news we need to hear, man. Make it official. <laughs> I see, I see, yeah, because that on ESPN, they was just, they was just, you know, Shaquille O'Neal and uh, Charles Barkley was going back and forth about uh, all the boxing going on, Earl Spence and uh, Terrence Crawford fight. How you feel about that Earl Spence and uh, Terrence Crawford situation? I don't know the business part of it, but and I like Errol, man, you know. I kicked it with Errol, man. He a real solid dude. Um, met him on numerous occasions. was cool every time, but uh, I, I, I don't want him to get back in there, Terrence, man. Yeah. I feel, yeah, yeah. They said, they said Terrence might have to fight. Uh, They said he might have to go for Canelo or something. What you think about that Canelo fight? Um, I don't think that fight will happen. Um, uh, Canelo really don't got nothing to earn from that, man, at this point in his career. He's been in the game 20 years, man. He's not old as a person, but as a boxer, you know, I don't think the passion is there no more and stuff like that. Um, but if the fight would happen, how do I think it would go? I, I don't know, man. It's interesting. But, that's a lot of weight for him to put on, man. 
No, I was watching Jeff. I was watching Jeff Mayweather channel the other day. Jeff, Jeff, anything Jeff say, man. Jeff, Jeff know everything about boxing. Jeff oh, on that, yeah. yeah, that channel. I was watching that, that Jeff Mayweather channel. He raised it. Yeah, I see. Hold on, help get me a water, man. All right. I see it. That's it, man. You think I had a background, man? I see, yeah, yeah, they got it. They got it. It's on there. You running live. You live right now. You live. to do. Y'all know what to do. I'm a little late today. Great. DJ.
DJs. Stay down for whatever, forever hustle with my misfit homes. 
so you go see as I croak this shit. We once we get rich. Till then it's back to hustling with my misfits. Deep on the creep, fifty souls tucked under the bro. Rick, 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 DJ. I keep a big old nigga, feed a heater. It's in the trunk, I'm out my door, no, and my two seater. Make all two skeeter, skeeter. Keep up and grab the ball, back just like I'm very cheater.
Just call me Bob, baby. 